The other issue that's been topical in the last few days has to do with illegal mining, Galamse. Yeah. Um, there's been talk about people in high places in government and in political parties who are neck deep in this illegality, polluting the water bodies, polluting, um, destroying the forest reserves. How does the commission come in when it comes to the impact of Galamse on residents in communities that have some of these uh, mining concessions, etc.? It's not only about how we come in, but as a commission that is protecting and promoting the rights of Ghanaians and other citizens, I, 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 the commission feels so disappointed in the fight against Galamse and uh, artisanal mining in, in general. It's a failed fight, uh, according to what many people we, have said. We, we, we are disappointed that no lesser person than the president would put his presidency on the line, he promised. Presidents don't promise and renege on their promises. For what has happened, which has dire implications on the health of so many Ghanaians, I must say that the government and the president have disappointed Ghanaians. And I have heard people talk about the possibility the president should declare a state of emergency. I, I, I actually subscribe to that. Because why wait? If you look at the pollution and the type of effects it is already having on um, still births and some uh, strange abnormalities in children and others, and even understand uh, kidney, the rise of kidney. I mean, these are not, not just grapevine rumors. These are experts who are mentioning this. Heavy metals in the water that we are drinking. Ghana Water Company cannot uh, Process cannot, cannot the process water. or treat the water. To the extent for that us. they say we, we could be importing water by 2030 based on and, the trends they are seeing. It appears government seems to just ignore all that. I don't understand. If you, you win the people's vote, you are supposed to work for them. And to the extent that party apparatchiks and all manner of people are benefiting from this, we are aware of it. And that may be the cause of the inertia of government as a commission. We cannot means our words. This is a disappointing disappointment from the government and for the president who has a lot of human rights credentials. He should do something before he leaves power soon. Without preempting the case before you, one of the members of parliament, um, Roxen Dafiamepo, has petitioned your office sometime last year to look into some of the claims or the content of a report by the then environment minister naming individuals in this. I don't know how far that has gone, but I guess you're still looking into it. Yeah. It's, we, we, we have gone very far. We've got enough evidence from the persons, the respondents, but we are now in the field. We have to verify the claims of the destruction and the effects of mining and because it's tied to people, we need to be sure that these are really the claims that are going uh, against the particular named persons. There are some unnamed persons. We have jettisoned that aspect of the bill, I mean, of the, uh, the, the complaint. I can't go beyond that, but rest assured, we are working diligently and will come out soon. Because of the sheer size of the, the land size that has been affected, which we need to go to the locus to be sure of, and which we are doing now, uh, there would be some delay. And that has been occasioned, yeah. How would you respond to critics who say, for example, state agencies are working in silos when it comes to some of these issues? So, for example, the, the police will be investigating one issue on the other hand, another body is looking into it, then at some point the, the law doesn't allow you to do that because another body is doing that. How do you respond to the, the critics who say then you're you just working inside? 
the police will be working on their mandates. Criminal investigations is not necessarily human rights investigations. And we are handling the human rights investigations, the allegations of corruption, the allegations of conflict of interest, among others. That is within our beef. Now we can't necessarily work with the police in that, in, in what I've mentioned. This is our, our, our turf. If the police are also around the same area, they're also looking at their own mandate. Otherwise, any outcome will be declared as ultra-virus. We need to be mindful of what the law gives us to do and perform right within it. I make this point because sometime this year, the Attorney General had issued an, an advice to the police CID that was investigating this same interministerial committee report and advice basically that all of the contents of the report were here says. Well, he is entitled to his opinion. As a commission, we are also entitled to how we see our mandate. We are proceeding with our mandate. We are, we are not seeing it as... In fact, Frimpong uh, Boateng, Prof, has been interviewed by us. Yes, I remember you did a comprehensive work around some allegations against him as a... Yes, but not that one. The, on the Roxins, uh, the uh, we have interviewed him and he has also further provided more information and some allegations that were made against he himself, he has had to respond to them. And so we are on. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to ask about timelines, but would you hazard a timeline for us? I, I wouldn't want to because we've got quite a number of... Um, I would say high profile cases that we are trying to conclude. What is important is that we want to do so when the people are still in the offices in which they approached us. We are dealing with um, the cathedral. Uh, we're dealing with this IMSIM, the environmental case. We're dealing with, in fact, some other high-profile cases that have been brought by uh, members of parliament. And we want to put them through before the end of their term so that they would, they, they will be, they will be, it, it, it will be meaningful to them.